the world is enthralled with conspiracy theories, political conspiracies, religious conspiracies. Have you even read people talk about the Buddhist teachings say he couldn't possibly have meant what he said, this business about going beyond desire. Sometimes they point out the paradox. If you want to put an end to desire, there you are, you're caught with desire. So maybe there's something else that the Buddha is trying to tell you. Probably the most straightforward teachings there are in the world, and people still try to get around them. The problem is, of course, that, that there's a conspiracy going on in their own minds. They don't want to practice. Your greed, aversion, and delusion can dress themselves up as wisdom. They can dress themselves up as dharma and fool you very easily. So you have to be very careful. Conspiracy theories outside. I mean, there actually may be conspiracies going on. As someone once said, just the fact that you're paranoid doesn't mean that people aren't really conspiring against you. And there may be conspiracies going on outside. But what are you going to do about them? The real conspiracy is the way the mind fools itself into wanting things that are going to disappoint it in the end. And we play along. We've been disappointed many, many times in the past. You know, we keep going back to the same old thoughts of greed, same old thoughts of aversion, same old thoughts of delusion. As if somehow if we could rearrange the elements a little bit, that would be better this time. But it's really the same old stuff, just over and over again. So instead of suspecting that the Buddha is conspiring against you, or the Pali Canon, or the people who compose the Canon, or the, the Taya Johns, or whoever, look to see what, to what extent you're not being honest with yourself. Because that's where the real test for the teaching comes in. And John Lee makes the point, and John Fu makes the point again and again and again, that if you want to find the truth, you really have to be true to yourself. It's your own honesty that's your only guarantee. After all, we have known of cases in the past where texts are highly re regarded, worshipped even, and that they turn out to be pretty false, sometimes very false, sometimes very detrimental. So who knows who composed the Pali Canon, what their motivation was. How are you going to test it? You test it in your own practice. Fortunately, the qualities that they recommend that you test, that you develop, are going to stand you in good stead no matter what. Wherever you go in life, you're going to need more mindfulness, more alertness, more discernment, more integrity. So the fact that you're asked to develop these qualities is not a waste, even if it turned out that there never really was a Buddha. Just a bunch of monks sitting around one time thinking up something. Although someone once said, whether there really was a Buddha or not, whoever wrote the canon was pretty inspired. But still, being inspired is no guarantee. Your guarantee, however, is your own truthfulness. That's that image the Buddha gives of the elephant hunter. Goes into the forest, sees footprints, look like they're the footprints of a bull elephant, but the elephant hunter is a wise and experienced elephant hunter. Knows that not every large footprint comes from a bull elephant. There are dwarf females with big feet. There's nothing wrong with females, but Dwarf females can't do the work that a bull elephant can do. You want a bull elephant. But it looks likely, so you follow it through. You follow those footsteps and you see scratch marks up in the trees, in the bark, 
on the limbs. Again, the experienced elephant hunter doesn't come to the conclusion that those must be the marks of a bull elephant, because after all there are tall, skinny females with tusks. Maybe they're scratch marks. It's only when he follows footprints and finally sees a bull elephant in a clearing, he says, okay, this is the bull elephant for sure. It's the same with the practice. The practice of concentration in the mind really does settle down. That's just footprints. Psychic powers are scratch marks. The only real guarantee is experience of the deathless. And even that, you have to be very, very honest and have a lot of integrity not to overestimate yourself. You have to work on your integrity. That's what helps you see the tricks of your defilements. Helps you see through any overestimation you may have about your your attainments. There's so much written about people who have low self-esteem as they meditate, and every effort is made to give them high self-esteem. But the opposite is true. Overly high self-esteem is a huge obstacle. And that, again, is one of the conspiracies in your mind. So one of you find yourself thinking about outside conspiracies. Remember, okay, the big conspiracy is the way the mind fools itself. And that's one that you're really suffering from. And the world outside is now never going to be free of conspiracies or conspiracy theories. As we all know, this is the way human beings act. They know that there's something that's rightly viewed as wrong. It doesn't keep them from doing it. They just try to do it in secret. That's never going to stop. But you can stop your own inner conspiracies. And this is why it's useful to think about the defilements of the mind as something separate from you. The committee image is very useful here. As I've said many times, the committee is not a group of people deciding to put, in, put on a charity event. It's the city council in a really corrupt city. And so there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, a lot of shady dealing. So when ideas come up in the mind, you have to learn how to step back from them, question them. Think of the example of a John Mun or Kiyanana Yanu, people who didn't have a teacher. In every case, they had to be very, very wary of what their minds were telling them. In John Mun's case, he was getting a lot of visions. So I had to learn how to regard the visions, not say as a deva actually coming to him. What if this is my mind playing tricks on me? How do I protect against that? But first you try to determine what's the Dharma lesson here and then how you might test it. Think of Gina and Yon's advice that when a realization comes into the mind, be very careful to see what's the next mental moment after that. What does your mind say? How does it comment on this? What assumptions is it making? Can you learn how to catch that and drop that? This is how you learn how to see some, through some of those conspiracies. That helps keep your practice on the right path.